Can I best describe your position as expressed over the weekend as currently giving the Prime Minister the benefit of the doubt? Well, I, I agree with the Prime Minister's, in essence, what it is, is a traffic light system, the different tiers. I think the government are in a uh, cleft stick position because damned if it do, does and damned if it doesn't. And if you look at what's going on around the world, in, in or even in Europe, close to home, in Germany, in Italy, in France, uh, huge spikes in cases, governments facing significant problems, um, lots of arguments about the level of lockdown, whether it's in Germany, Italy or France. So uh, I, I actually have sympathy for what the government is trying to do. But leadership is about having come to a conclusion, even if the science is conflicting and even if the recommended measures are slightly conflicting. Once a prime minister has said this is what we are going to do, what impression does it leave the country with when the Prime Minister, with a near 80-seat majority, is having to try and cut grubby deals with the mayor of a city? Well, the traffic light system, I do believe, is the least worst option. It's not ideal. And uh, I want my own area, for example, in Essex, is in Tier 2, and I want to make sure that there is... Uh, proper funding for businesses in tier two, which hasn't isn't we we don't know what that is going to be at this current time, but of course with devolution it has changed the nature of the power between Westminster and the regions. I'm very pro devolution. I'd rather have more powers uh, to local authorities or mayors um, or devolved administrations um, than than less. And inevitably this is what. Uh, what devolution means. It means that local regions can actually fight back against the against the centre. But this is a national crisis, Robert. This isn't a, an Essex crisis or a Scotland crisis. Uh, it's a national crisis. The virus doesn't recognise county borders or even national borders. I mean, it, it, I think you're being very generous to the Prime Minister. Doesn't he and Lister need to get a grip and bang some heads together rather than trying to cut backroom deals? Well, I think, as I understand it, the funding that is going to be given to some of these areas is is going to be the similar levels of funding as the Liverpool um, city region has uh, received. Um, ideally, in an ideal world, that would be right. But if you have devolved power, it means that these mayors have significant powers uh, themselves. They are significant region regional figures. And also, um, as we have just seen and you've just said, um, these Mayors are backed by many of their local MPs. So it is very difficult now in nowadays for the centre to impose its will in the way that it might have done uh, in the past. Because just because you have an 80 seat majority doesn't mean that uh, the powers in these regions have changed. The powers in these regions in many cases were devolved. Uh, so that we could have strong regional and local governments. But at a time of national crisis, don't you think Sir Graham Brady, the chair of the 1922 committee of all of you uh, Tory MPs, whether you, like yourself, are chairman of a select committee or uh, or Rishi Sunak, Chancellor of the Exchequer, you're all, you know, the, the, the backbench committee is there and, and you all have experience and knowledge of it. Shouldn't Graham Brady rise above local challenges and say, look, this is about national leadership. Get on with it. Well, I'm on the 1922 executive. Uh, I was elected to that position. I don't happen to agree with Sir Graham Brady on his viewpoint, but he's perfectly entitled to have it. It's right that we have this debate going on in the country. I think that, as I say, I think the traffic light system, the t three tiers is the least worst option. Uh, whatever the government does um, is going to be uh, criticise. Graham, Sir Graham Brady, who I hugely respect, takes a different view. I've learned as an MP not to interfere with what goes on in other constituencies um, because they may have uh, different information that I don't have. I supported Tier 2 in Essex because I thought it was, again, the least worst option. And other, I, I thought that if we didn't accept it, we could be in a similar situation uh, to the northern cities. But inevitably, there are going to be MPs who take these different views and we should respect it, but nevertheless make the argument. And at the end of the day, I think the prime minister will make uh, a, a final decision as to what is best for the country, but hopefully come to an agreement with the uh, devolved administrations and local authorities first. That's going to take some money. And, and Rishi Sunak is, is quoted in the papers this morning as saying 
uh, that he he's not going to budge on extending the furlough uh, generally, but 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 may come up with uh, tens of millions more uh, to to oil the wheels as far as uh, uh, Manchester is concerned. Um, Claire Fogues writes a fascinating piece in the in the Times today in the comment section. It's time to stop the coronas virus uh, coronas gravy train. Claire's writing, and she used to write speeches for David Cameron, um, but she's writing particularly about the the millions that have gone into track and trace to no great effect. Um, today, we're likely to see some more money, therefore, go in the direction of Manchester. I mean, you're what's described as a, a blue-collar Tory, a working-class Tory, uh, but apart from the national health being at stake in this, your reputation as a political party for looking after the national finances is in tatters. Not only are you spending huge amounts of money, Robert, but as Claire points out, you're spending huge amounts of money in some areas and not getting value for money. Does that not embarrass you? Well, I think it is uh, horrific, some of the sums that these big uh, management consultancies, uh, whether it's Boston Consulting or Serco, are receiving from the uh, government. It looks like they're, in essence, uh, uh, plundering from the taxpayer. And when you read the stories of the £7,000 a day for consultants, it looks pretty sick. Now, it may be that uh, there was no alternative, but I think that this sort of thing can't go on. And it's a gift to those people who say that uh, there is one rule for uh, the rich and one rule for everybody else, especially when people have been struggling uh, with the uh, coronavirus. And uh, I don't want this to happen for much longer. If this is a temporary situation because we're in a national emergency, well, um, perhaps uh, it can be just permitted. But it is ro clearly wrong that these companies are plundering the taxpayer. And it isn't just during the coronavirus. It seems that these big consultancies take huge whacks of taxpayers' money uh, for all kinds of different uh, consultancies. And if the uh, uh, the government or Dominic Cummings or whoever it may be really want to get to grips with the state, they've got to stop this once and for all. Maybe have a quiet word with your mate Meg Hillier, who <laughs> fellow chair. I think she's the Public Accounts Committee, isn't she? Um, Robert, we've got uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, um, and I'm going to change tack very slightly, if I may. Uh, and I know that that you are more than capable of dealing with that. But there's another fascinating story on the front page of the Times: Exodus of male teachers leaves boys without role models. Now, I said at the very beginning, uh, you are a, a member of parliament, of course, for, for Harlow, but you're also, very importantly, uh, the chair of the Education Select Committee. Thousands of male teachers are leaving secondary school classrooms every year, fueling fears that a lack of role models is contributing to the underperformance of boys. Um, a, do you agree? B, what needs to be done? Well, it's, this is very timely, this research, because we're doing an inquiry in our education committee in Parliament into the uh, lack of attainment of disadvantaged uh, white working class boys and girls compared to many other different cohorts and ethnic uh, uh, groups. And some of that may be down, uh, due to lack of a, role, a male role model in the schools, according to the research that's just been published uh, uh, today. There are lots of other reasons, of course, and uh, we, we're looking at those uh, as a committee, it's good that the teacher starting salary has uh, in, uh, is in, going to be increased. What I'd like to see a local teacher training college is an area where there in areas where there is problems of recruitment, uh, but also uh, an introduction of teaching degree apprenticeships so people can learn uh, while they earn. Um, they can have practical on the job training. I think it would encourage a lot more people to become teachers. Mm. They still have rigorous uh, degree uh, teaching, but it would be much more practical and day to day and there'd be no student loan that they would have to worry about either. And I think the government should look at those kind of things to encourage more teacher recruitment. Uh, final point on that, and it, it it's potentially explosive, but I shall say it anyway because it's on my mind. Uh, you said that the, the real victims of all of this are white working class uh, uh, children uh, and I, I, I've, I've read what you've written about that in the past, uh, and it's a very, very powerful argument. Have education policy thinkers spent too much time worrying about ethnic minorities at the expense of white working class kids? 
Well, uh, as a, at every level uh, through the system, a white, it's, I must stress, it's white working class boys and girls from disadvantaged backgrounds on free school meals that are uh, uh, doing less well than many other ethnic groups. I think clearly there's been a concentration on people from disadvantaged backgrounds. But what I would say is that not enough attention has been uh, um, placed on uh, a white working class boys and girls. It's been regarded as a taboo. I've been accused of being racist in the past for even uh, considering this subject, which is absolutely uh, ludicrous, especially when I'm acknowledging that many ethnic groups actually do better than disadvantaged white work, working class boys and girls. And we need investment in the system. We need to target the pupil premium much better, target the new catch up fund that the government have announced have a lot more investment in early years and family hubs um, and also recognize try and ensure that and this is something we've spoken about before that there is a parity of, ste of esteem between vocational education and a university uh, education that it has as much prestige and transform careers advice in our schools so we need to change the system all the way through to ensure uh, that white working class boys and girls from disadvantaged backgrounds have that same chance to climb the education ladder of opportunity as everybody else. Crucial points. And uh, I was talking to uh, uh, one of the top people at IBM um, at the end of last week and was thrilled to bits to hear her say that in terms of recruitment now, uh, that they, they are as interested in kids who've got good apprenticeships as they are with in people who've got absolutely brilliant top first class honours degrees from great universities as well. There is an equality there and that's IBM. Where IBM goes, perhaps others will follow.